The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. So what is the new online GES seminary all about? Hi there, welcome to Grace in Focus. Today we're going to talk about the new online seminary from the Grace Evangelical Society. You can find out more about it by going to gesseminary.org or faithalone.org. Well, let's get into our introduction of this new seminary today with Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates. Well, welcome back to Grace and Focus. Uh, Ken, what are we going to talk about this uh, episode? Well, I think we are going to talk about the something what we're very excited about here at GES, which is we have recently started a, would you call it a Bible college or would you call it a seminary? I guess a seminary. We're calling yeah. it a seminary yeah. because we're not offering college degrees. Right. We're offering a Master of Divinity. Well, that's what would be a seminary. Yeah. A- absolutely. Now, this is an unaccredited degree. And what does unaccredited mean? Well, there's different accrediting associations right. that you have to go if you're a school and you want to get their stamp of approval. Uh, you have to go through certain hoops. And uh, it's usually going to involve money, and it's going to be in other things. We are not seeking the accreditation of any of these associations. And one of the problems with accreditation is it's not just money, but they also require that your faculty go to highly approved schools like Oxford or Cambridge or Sheffield or Tubingen or Basel or Duke or Harvard or Yale. And all of these schools introduce theology, which is contrary to what we wish to teach, which is the Word of God. They take liberal views of inerrancy, liberal views of soteriology, liberal views of eschatology, lots of things, and ends up that people who go to these schools and get their doctorates come back no longer the same type of teacher, and we don't want that. So we're going to be unaccredited. And that and that's always been a little strange to me, you know, that these schools, pick, pick whatever school, you know, if, if you have a set of beliefs and you want to propagate that set of beliefs— why would you allow another organization to come in and go, okay, we want your professors to go places that don't share your beliefs? That's and, exactly right. And if you stop and think about it, guess when Dallas Seminary was a, well, for when did Dallas Seminary start? 1924. Right. And originally I think it was called Dallas no. Bible College, but in 1936, it was called Dallas Theological Seminary. And Dallas Theological Seminary was accredited in what year, do you know? Oh, I have no idea. 1973. Oh, wow. Prior to that, so, from from 24 to 73, so what is that, one year shy of 50? <laughs> uh, it was unaccredited. And then Dr. Walford got the school accredited. And guess what immediately happened? They started sending faculty over to Europe. And they got their doctorates from Oxford, from Cambridge, from Sheffield, from Glasgow, from Basel, or many other schools. And they came back, and it changed Dallas Seminary to where many alumni, like you and me, are grieved by where the seminary has gone as a result of the influence that these new teachers had. And for the listeners who may not be up on this kind of thing or, you know, not been through the experiences that Bob and I have been, the argument goes something like this. Well, a well-rounded education needs to have, how would we say it, different views. Right. That you need to be exposed to different views. Right. And so the question for the, the listener here is, is that really right? You know, again, I go back to my original question. If if we're a school, any school that is promoting a certain belief, why do I want to talk about other views, you know, or 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 what a liberal uh, might think of this or someone who doesn't believe in the inspiration of scriptures? Why do I need to go study under that person if right. I reject that? Right. Yeah, I think it's fine to make people aware of it. And people who take our seminary classes, they will be aware of other views and the views out there that are problematic. 
But we're not going to have any faculty members who hold those aberrant views. By the way, you got your doctorate from Dallas Seminary in New Testament, right? Right. What year? Uh, 2014. So you, when did you start? Like 29, 2010? Yeah, right around uh, 2009. Okay. Right? So you were in there for uh, that period of time, and it's not been 10 years since you graduated. And did you find that the instruction there was somewhat different than your views? Yeah, I found that, you know, I, you know, I did my THM in the middle 80s. Yeah. And I, I did see a change. Yeah, you, yeah. you saw a change. Now, obviously, the... The Ph.D. program and the THM program, you know, the classes are different. Right. But, yeah, you, you could tell a difference. Yeah. Yeah. So the school changed over the course of years, and our goal is to have the same doctrine so that if someone goes now and then if the Lord tarries in 40 years from now, we're still in existence, that when they come back, it would be the same doctrine still being taught. Yeah, I think, you know, to your question about DTS, I don't think there's anybody, well, I don't think any uh, neutral observer would not say, for example, in the area of dispensationalism, that there hasn't been a change in the teachers at Dallas when it comes to dispensationalism. Well, yeah. as far as I know, there's not a single dispensationalist at Dallas Seminary anymore. <laughs> well, they're, <laughs> they're all progressive dispensationalists. Yeah, so there, so there's a there is a a concrete example of of what we're talking about. You know? I mean, I heard Dr. Wayne House say at the pre-trib study group that when he taught at Dallas Seminary and he taught theology, he he started talking about dispensationalism in one of his classes, and the students raised their hand and said, what's that? Which is amazing. And for, they had no <laughs> idea. They knew what progressive dispensationalism was, and so he had to teach them what dispensationalism was. Wow. Because they're not taught dispensationalism, they're taught progressive dispensationalism. Well, let me give you a, a little outline, Ken, of our three-year program, and then we'll talk about this semester. Sure. Uh, and we may need to carry this on to another show. In terms of our three years, here's what we're offering. Uh, in the f first year, we offer soteriology, which is the doctrine of salvation. We offer first-year Greek uh, first semester, second semester, we offer Old Testament survey, and then we offer pastoral ministries. And then in the second semester, we offer uh, introduction to theology in terms of bibliology and ecclesiology, those two doctrines. And then the second semester of Greek, then New Testament survey, and then the second semester of pastoral ministries. Then in year two, we offer theology proper, Christology, and pneumatology. And pneumatology the, is the study of the Spirit. The Holy right, Spirit, right. pneuma for spirit. And then Greek third semester, and then tough text, uh, problem passages, which you've taught, and preaching one, the first homiletics course. And then in the second semester of the second year, we teach on eschatology and dispensationalism, on fourth semester Greek, eternal rewards, which is a Bible class, and then the second semester of homiletics or preaching. And then in year three, we do angelology and anthropology, followed by the fifth semester of Greek, followed by the third semester of preaching, and then a research for your thesis. And then in the second semester, there's an elective and then there's the sixth semester of Greek, the fourth semester of preaching or homiletics, and then the actual writing of your thesis, which is a 40 to 60 page uh, argument that is scholarly in scope. And so in this three year program, which can be extended as long as people want, in other words, they can take five, six years, 10 years to do it. They don't have to do it all in three years. But right now, I think we have four to six people. This is our first semester starting this month, uh, August of 2023. I'm not sure when this will air. But we already have four to six that plan to go right through this in three years. And there are others who will take it in longer. Now, this semester, we're doing soteriology, which I'm teaching. You're teaching first-year Greek. You're team teaching that with Dr. Tony Badger. Tony right? Badger. We have about 25 students. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And then Old Testament survey is being taught by Philippe Sterling, who got his uh, Master of Theology in Old Testament Dallas Seminary. 
And then Pastoral Ministry 1 is being taught by Steve Elkins. And since I've taught uh, soteriology before, we're also offering the Theology Proper Christology and Pneumatology class that Steve Elkins is also teaching. He has his theology degree from Dallas Theological Seminary. And I should point out that all of these classes have Zoom sessions. And you already met earlier today with your Greek One class. What, what do you do in a Zoom session? Zoom class, uh, what happens is we have the students do the uh, homework and so the reading during the week, and then uh, the teacher, the professor, meets with them during the a Zoom. We just meet over a Zoom class where they can ask questions. Uh, I teach them on, on, the, on the material that for that week. And uh, in the case of Greek, they also watch videos during the week as well on, right. on different classes. So we use a combination of uh, things. But in the Zoom, it's a chance for them to come together and uh, I can maybe uh, clear up some things that may not be clear in the reading. And then it gives them an opportunity to ask questions uh, in the class. It's just like being in a classroom. Right. Now, we also, in all the classes, we have some lectures, well, all but Logos, we have a a uh, course this semester also on Logos Bible software that Bill Feast is teaching. And in all the other classes, there's between 10 and 12 prepared lectures that are videos that people can watch. And then there's reading they do. And then typically most of our classes, the students will write short papers. Right. Like 250 to 500 word papers, maybe a semester project at the end that might be 2,000 to 3,000 words. And in the case of the Greek, you've got lots of quizzes and then some exams, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to say about this is I get I get asked fairly regularly, where can I go to have a free grace <laughs> uh, seminary education? Well, this is the answer. This is what we're trying to uh, provide. Yeah. If you want what's called a focused free grace seminary education I believe this is your ticket. I don't think there's anything out there that is focused free grace other than what we're offering. And we plan to offer a full schedule. And let's go ahead and continue this uh, a second show because I'd like to talk about the cost, which is free, and why it's free, and some of the other details about the school. Absolutely. In in the meantime, what do we want to do, Ken? Keep grace in focus. focus. Would you like to deepen your understanding of Scripture and the Christian life? Well, a great place to start is our website. It's faithalone.org. We've got all kinds of free materials on the site available for you. One of those which is extremely popular is our magazine, Grace in Focus. Stop by and get a free subscription at faithalone.org. We are so happy when we hear from listeners. Maybe you've got a question or comment or feedback. Here's our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. On the next episode of Grace in Focus, we continue our discussion about the Grace Evangelical Society's new online seminary. Ken and Bob will be talking more about how the seminary is being sustained and operated. Hope you will join us. Until then, let's keep grace in focus. The preceding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.